The beautiful chime you just heard is one of our guiding intentions here at Shed Children's Campus. We are located on the beautiful grounds of Phillips Academy. With over two acres of natural beauty for us to explore, we offer your child a truly unique experience to be curious and play in nature. Our entire campus lives and breathes with the Reggio Emilia philosophy, respecting the whole child. Children spend each day exploring and growing. Our educators respect a child's natural innate curiosity and give the children the space to grow and to learn. What makes us unique and blessed is our home. Our grounds are perfect for children to explore nature and the great outdoors in all four seasons. We have over 15 organic gardens that children farm, play, and learn. We are close to downtown Andover. Our children love their walks to the library, to the police and fire station, to the historical museum, Rabbit Pond, and the bird sanctuary, which makes us one with our community. It's an it's a absolutely wonderful place, and it's an honor to be on the board. I've been uh, a part of the board for about eight or nine years now. Um, my children both came to, to Shed Kids Club. It's a child enrichment program that is, is far superior in my eyes than some of the other programs around. It's a nonprofit program on the beautiful campus of uh, Phillips Academy. Um, now I've got two children coming through the program. My eight-year-old's been in the program now for several years and my four-year-old will be starting uh, really this summer and both after school programs and also the summer camp. SHED is, is, is a really special opportunity because it, it, it gives us back something that is, is so precious that we're losing, um, which is the time to, to be kids again. And so I think really one of the big things that SHED gives us is the ability to turn away from the computer just for a little time, from the screen just for a little time, and interact with each other in, in, in a child-focused, child-led manner, whether that be physical activities, whether that be crafting, whether that be drama play, etc. Um, and my eight-year-old has really certainly always has a little extra spring in his step when he comes. For me, it was, it was such a breathtaking um, experience, almost hard to put in words. The documentation piece is, I think, is a huge part of the Reggio Emilia philosophy. I think us as teachers need to um, know our children in order to help them progress. And I think it's our job to put out um, a variety of materials, um, let them explore with an intent that it's going to be purposeful and meaningful to them. And then we can document their interactions and then later um, collaborate with other teachers and um, be able to revisit. Reggio was the most overwhelming experience, but in such an amazing way. You want to try to remember everything that you're seeing and bring it back to you and share with the families and your co-teachers here. One of the biggest impacts it had on me was when we visited a school with children in it. Walking around the school, you only heard children's voices. You didn't hear adults. You heard a lot of children's questions, they're talking, which just showed that it's very child-led. And I try to incorporate that every day when I'm in my classroom being mindful of my voice, being mindful of the children's voices. Being able to work in an organization that appreciates and fosters the Reggio approach is a dream come true. What struck me when we got there is the timelessness of the philosophy. It's lasted since the 1940s and hasn't changed a whole lot. It's updated, however, the philosophy is the same. The respect for families and children, relationships, is so organic that it takes your breath away. It's a very child-based philosophy that's developmentally appropriate and fosters the whole child. It was life-changing. The feeling being there was just pure joy, and I felt, I, I felt it the whole time from walking up to the building, from seeing the children in the schools, from observing the teachers, being with the children, but taking that step back and just watching them, letting them explore, letting them have sort of the floor. We have that belief in the children here and we can bring that to them every day and the different things that we choose and the different things that we let the children choose. And then it's our job 
um, to then take that that interest that the things that are they're, they're curious about, the things that they wonder, and feel that wonder with them, and then find ways that we can support that here. And then the really neat thing about the children who are older is that they're working right alongside us, and they, they continually give to what we're, as we're providing, they're adding to what we're providing, so we're, we're, it's, we're doing it together, which is a really neat experience. I think Reggio, because it, again, it, I, it's going back to the belief in children. And I think the Reggio philosophy just believes that children have everything inside them that they need, and we just have to be there to support that and to help them bring it out. Begin by talking about the history of our organization, saying that we've been around for 30 years. Um, and that says a lot when you talk to a family because, you know, we have deep community roots and we're invested in this, this town and community outside of our own community here um, and just the longevity of a lot of our staff members as well and the evolution of our organization, how we evolved from, you know, a half-day kindergarten program that was originated through the town into this full-fledgling organization um, serving children from 3 to 15, so how we evolved with our gardens and you know, really talking to them about, you know, we started with one garden and now we have 15 garden beds and how we incorporate that into the programming, um, the mindfulness and the Reggio inspiration. So kind of touch upon that, but begin just with the history of the organization um, and seeing what their needs are and vice versa. My older son has been coming here since the three-year-old program. So he did three-year-old, four-year-old, and now he's in springboard. And I find that there's a lot of outdoor play which I know is great for him, one, to be out in nature so much, and two, to be able to work through the social-emotional uh, issues that come up and to uh, the problem-solving. And I think just having that time for kids to work through their problems together is, the, is paramount at this age. You have a beautiful playground that has an actual play set, and I like the fact that the kids don't actually go on that during the day. We save that for after school. Uh, and what they do during the day is they go off onto the campus and it helps them to really use their imaginations because they're dealing with sticks and trees and rocks and leaves and their play seems to be more creative than, if, than just on the, um, the playground. One of the things that I've noticed that helps Nate a lot is the fact that in the morning we drop him off and he's got the ability to run around and spend time getting rid of his jiggles, as his teacher puts it. Um, and we've seen performance improvement in school because he's been able to settle down and focus on what's being presented to them in class. Um, they're in the gym or they're outside, depending on the weather. Uh, they do a lot of tag games and building airplanes and then chasing those around and just, you know, regular good unstructured play. So after reaching out for the initial phone call conversation, we truly are building a relationship with your family, your child, um, and our community here at Chet Children's Campus. So that phone call is the start of a relationship. We hope you take a moment and plan a tour and come by and visit our beautiful campus.